So I feel like self-care is thrown around a lot these days. And there's so, I get really frustrated about it because yes, massages and bubble baths and pedicures, like yes, that is all part of self-care. But self-care is so much deeper than that. And in today's video, I want to give you guys a few things you can do to really self-care for yourself on a much deeper level. and I help teach people how to find inner happiness through fitness and spirituality. And today, I'm going to give you five ways to give yourself self-care on a much deeper level. Now, the most important part of self-care is loving yourself unconditionally. And that's something that's really hard for us as humans to do. And a lot of times even very difficult for us to comprehend even what that means. I do believe that unconditionally loving yourself is a lifelong journey. I'm going to give you five ways to self care for yourself. And the first one hits home for me a lot. And I know it probably does to 95% of the people out there. And that is being kind to your body. And I don't mean by moving or working out or yoga or going for walks, although that is very important as well. But I mean with your words, being kind to your body with words. And instead of looking at all of your flaws in the mirror, looking at how amazing your body is and all the wonderful things it does for you without you even having to think about it. I mean, you woke up today, you're breathing, you know, you're, 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 you're tasting, you're smelling, you're hearing, you're, your sense of touch and the ability to connect with yourself and the material world and other people through holding hands and hugging and all those beautiful things. And so often we sit there like myself, and I'll look in the mirror and say, well, I need to lose five pounds, or I need to do this, or I need Botox, or whatever it may be for you. And we pick and nitpick ourselves apart with these harsh, negative words. You know, this morning I woke up, and <laughs> one of the first thoughts that came into my head, because I was, I like to sleep on my side, so I was laying on my side, and obviously, if your body is relaxed on your side, it's not like you're standing up and, you know, posing and tight and whatever it is. And one of the first thoughts I thought this morning because of the way I was laying was, Sarah, you're so fat. <laughs> really? But immediately, I corrected my statement and I said, Sarah, you are not fat. You are beautiful just the way you are. And I sat or I laid there and I gave gratitude to all of the wonderful things that my body does for me. And also gave myself a little pat on the back for working so hard and feeding it so healthy and keeping my body active. The more kind words you give to yourself, whether it has to do with your body or anything else in your life, the more you're going to believe them and the better you're going to feel about yourself in general. Number two. Be proud of yourself, not just for the big things, but the little things too. I wanna to give an example of a baby. So when a baby begins to walk, they'll take a step or a few steps and then they fall on their little tushies. And everyone around them is cheering like, yay, they took that step or they took those three steps. We're not sitting there you know, ripping them apart and condemning them for falling down on their cute little butts, you know? So why do we do that to ourselves? Hmm. Why when we take a few steps or one baby step ahead, do we tell ourselves, that's not enough. You're still not good enough. And you still focus on the negative. And I'm very excited about this particular one today because I currently am sitting in the first property I've ever bought. My tenants are currently out of town. They know I'm here. Uh, I came to just do some final touches in the basement and everything. And 
I felt that I bit off a lot more than I could chew with this property and renovating it. I've never renovated anything before. And this was a very long process because myself and my parents, angels, they were amazing, did like 90% of the work ourselves. And I have a full-time job, they have full-time jobs, and they live like an hour and a half away. So something that probably could have been done within two, maybe three weeks of us doing it on our own, took four, about four months, like three and a half, four months. And I was here on every free moment I had, doing things that I never knew how to do before. And I was very overwhelmed. I had a lot of spouts of doubt and regret, and buyer's remorse. Why did I spend this much money on this property? Why am I spending these money? Like, I calculated out it was going to take me over 10 years just to break even between my down payment and the renovations I put in. And I had a lot of regret from time to time. And <laughs> I came in here about two weeks ago after my tenants had moved in. And I looked around and I just felt, I just allowed myself to feel so, so proud of the work I had done, of, of marching through even when I had doubts and continuing to put the work in and figuring things out the way I as I went and so much gratitude for my wonderful parents and you know I look around here and I just I can't believe it so I'm just going to show you guys the first floor here and I'll put in some before pictures too just so because I am proud and when you're proud you should not only tell yourself but tell everyone show everyone be proud of yourself and I am proud that I did this so I'm just gonna show you real quick. It'll be like 30 seconds. <laughs> so this is just the main room. So this is the front door and you walk in and this is what it looks like. And I, that's where I was sitting. Absolutely love it. Even the stairs we painted, they were carpeted. We sanded those down, did all that. The banister was a pain in the ass. I did that myself. I even put in the light fixture. Like I, we literally did everything. And then it goes right here into the kitchen. So all the flooring's brand new, everything's new. Literally everything. And I'm just so proud and excited to show you guys this. And I really look forward to, you know, doing the next one. And yeah, just a little snippet of other parts of my life. I'm very involved in real estate. That's what I do full time. And this is something that I've wanted to do for a long time, you know. And I'm going to continue to have rentals and Airbnbs and stuff like this. So I just wanted to show you guys that. Be proud of yourself for everything. If you're having a depressed day, but you end up getting up and cooking yourself a meal, and that's all you can bear to do that day, be proud of yourself for it. Number three, recognize that in some way, no matter how big or small, you are currently living of something you used to pray for, of something you used to wish for or want. And that could be anything. It could be the weight you lost. It could be the relationship you're in. It could be your, your family. It could be the group of friends you found. It could be your work. It could be buying a house and renovating it. It could be anything. But recognize that, you know, we're always so focused on once we achieve a goal or once we get whatever X is, immediately we have that gratitude for a little bit, whether it's a few hours, a few days, a few weeks, whatever, and then all of a sudden the bar is raised higher, which is great. It's always good to have goals, but always recognize where you're at and have that presence of mind that you are currently somewhere in some part of your life where you wanted to be one year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, and recognize that and, and bask in the beauty of that and understand that things that you want right now that you have not yet achieved, five years from now or 10 years from now or one year from now, 
you're gonna look back and be like, this is amazing. I wanted this for so long. I worked hard for this or I, I overcame these challenges and here I am. Never forget to be in the present moment and to have gratitude for everything. Number four, say no whenever you freaking want to. You don't wanna to go to a gathering? Don't go. You don't wanna meet your coworkers out at the bar after work? Don't go. You need some alone time in your room when your friends or your roommates or your significant other wanna hang out? Say no, and you don't have to be an asshole about it. <laughs> you know, you can just say, hey, I, I just need some alone time or I'm not really feeling up for it. And yes, sometimes you may get some pushback, but that's also setting a boundary. And people may not be used to you setting boundaries. So when you start doing it, you're gonna get some pushback. But guess what? Over time, people will stop pushing back on it. You know. I went to Penn State, we are, and I was a very big partier for the first like two, two and a half years, like big partier. Loved drinking a lot. And around that time, you know, when I was about two years in college was when I started getting into nutrition and fitness. And those two things became very important to me. and. Uh, the more I dove into it and the more I learned about how terrible alcohol and and unhealthy food is for you the, the, the more I started to stray away from it and my friends in college who we are all still very close today I just absolutely adore every single one of them they might not even remember but they gave me a lot of pushback for a long time and would say well you used to party or you used to be down to do this and da 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 and it took me to consistently set my boundaries and say no. And sometimes, yeah, I would go out. It was great. I wouldn't, you know, I still was going out on the weekends and whatever. It was a slow process, but I got a lot of pushback at first. Whereas now, if we meet up and we're, you know, at a party or going out for drinks or whatever, if I choose that day not to have an, an alcoholic beverage, they don't say a word about it it's, it's not even a thing because they understand that my goals and what's important to me and as i've set these boundaries over the years that i am different now and i'm not some huge partier anymore and that that's okay and if people aren't okay with that after time goes by they might not be who you thought they were and they might not be your friends but my re friends respect me and they respect my decisions and it was just something that they had to get used to. It's a change. So learn to say no and don't feel sorry for it. The fifth and final thing I want to leave you guys with, which may be the most important, is to learn to listen to your body and your intuition. We all have intuition and the more you get used to listening to it and the more you tap into your intuition, the easier it becomes over time. You know, take time, sit with yourself for like a minute or two minutes or five minutes and ask yourself, what does my mind need right now? What does my body need right now? What does my soul need right now? And I promise you, you're gonna get some answers. Like right now, if I ask my body what it needs, I need to like crack my back. Ah, oh, felt good. <laughs> My soul needed to make this video. I love making YouTube videos. I just, I do, I love it. And you need to let the answer flow to you. You don't want to force it. Just ask yourself whatever it is that you think you need and let it go and it'll come to you. Sometimes my body's like, girl, I need a snack. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, what kind of snack? And my body's like, you know, something salty or something sweeter. I really need fruit. And the more and more you have these intuitive conversations with yourself, the easier it becomes to connect with yourself until you know yourself at a deeper level. Sometimes my body wants to skip the gym. It's so in my routine. It's so much intertwined in my daily routine to go to the gym. 
I usually go six days a week. Sometimes it is seven. And some days I don't want to go. Or like yesterday, I got there and I just wasn't feeling it. I was just like, nah, <laughs> nah, I don't want to be here. So I just did some walking on the treadmill. I did some light lifting and I got the hell out of there because that's what my body was telling me to do in the moment. Sometimes I just want to lay down and watch a movie. So I do it. All of this is so important for self care. It's not just about going out and spending loads of money and shopping and doing this. It is about being connected with yourself. It is about feeding your soul and your mind and your body in a way that it craves. Our bodies are so much more intelligent than what we give them credit for. And I really want to remind you or to tell you to stop treating your body like it's your opponent. Your body is your friend. Your body is your teammate. Your body wants to work with you. And once you learn to just truly listen to your intuition and your soul and your mind and your body and connect the three, you will be so much happier, healthier, more positive, and just all around having more balanced and loving life. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and got a lot out of these tips. Comment below and let me know which one is your favorite. And if you want a part two, I can definitely do a part two because I feel that these things are a lot more different than what most people talk about as far as self-care on YouTube. I love you guys so freaking much. And don't forget, do not forget, be limitlessly yourself.